When you hear the word investing, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Do you picture a man in a pinstripe suit, screaming into a phone, checking the stock chart data on the 20 monitor sitting behind him? Or do you picture the underside of your mattress where you stash all of your hard-earned cash because you think investing is too risky? Or does your mind go completely blank? Now, what do you think about when you hear the term speculation? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is CJ and I'm a software engineer and investor in Chicago. And today I'm going to be covering the differences between investing and speculation. Now, before we get started, I want to remind everybody that this is not investment advice. It is purely for educational purposes only. In the context of this discussion of investing in speculation, I'll primarily be talking about long only stock positions as opposed to short selling or real estate, although these definitions could apply to different asset classes as well. It's what I personally understand the best and I think it makes for a pretty good example. And if you wanna keep investing in your financial education, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with the videos that I'm posting every week. With all that said, let's get started. The section defining what investing is is actually going to be rather short. It's a lot easier to define investing by what it isn't. So I'll provide a brief example and then we'll move on to exploring what speculation is. We can define investing in simple terms, laying out money today with the expectation that you'll receive more money in the future. In security analysis, Benjamin Graham goes one step further and defines an investment operation as one which, upon thorough analysis, promises safety of principle and an adequate return. Operations not meeting these requirements are speculative. So the bottom line for investing is we need to thoroughly analyze businesses, both quantitatively and qualitatively, ensure we have protection on the downside so that we don't lose money if we make an incorrect investment, and ensure we're making an investment that provides an adequate return relative to our other opportunities of investment. Benjamin Graham wrote, investing is most intelligent when it is most businesslike. It's common practice to consider anyone buying or selling stocks to be an investor, regardless of what price was paid for the stock, if they took on more debt to buy the stock, or why the stock was selected in the first place. We're in the middle of a raging bull market and it almost seems difficult to lose money in this environment. I know that's a bit of an exaggeration, but bear with me. So if you aren't losing money, aren't you investing? In fact, doesn't that make you a pretty good investor? This is that tricky gray area where a lot of speculators think that they're investing and the positive market returns are reinforcing their behavior and hiding the fact that their approach is maybe a little more dangerous than they thought. Think of speculation like gambling. You're certainly allowed to do it, but you don't want to gamble all of your life savings on something that in all probability won't work out. Symptoms of speculation include, but are not limited to, buying into a business regardless of price, buying into a business based on price action, not on the underlying business, It's okay if you've engaged in any of this behavior before. There's nothing illegal or immoral about speculation, but it certainly isn't investing. In fact, speculation is actually in some circumstances a driving force for good. Budding startups have to build their capital reserves from somewhere, and these intelligent speculators sometimes take a big bet on these small companies to both provide them with the capital liquidity that they need and also to hopefully receive a large payoff in the future. Think of where we might be if Amazon, as a young company, had never received any cash infusions. You might say the business landscape would look a lot differently, for better or for worse. But that's for another day. If you can't convincingly summarize 
in a short paragraph or even a sentence why you're investing in a specific business, you are most likely speculating because you just don't understand the opportunity well enough. One question you can ask yourself to test whether or not you might be speculating or investing is if the stock market closed for the next five or 10 years and you weren't able to check the price of your investment, would you be able to sleep well at night? Or would you be up all night feeling anxious, biting your nails, not being able to sleep at all? There are major psychological components to both investing and speculating. You have to really understand how you're gonna react when the either speculation or investment goes up or down because you will definitely react differently in both cases. With a sound investment approach, you should be able to handle the gyrations of the market more confidently and calmly because you've analyzed and have a pretty deep understanding of the fundamentals of the business you've invested in. If you speculate on a hot tip you received from a buddy at work, you definitely won't have the certainty or conviction that you would have if you followed a sound investment approach. And in all likelihood, you would end up selling at the wrong time and buying more shares at the wrong time because you really don't know what you're doing in that case. It's probably best to avoid speculation altogether unless you can afford to part with every single dollar. So to summarize, investing is when you have analyzed a business and determined that it provides both an adequate margin of safety or protection on the downside and an adequate return. Speculation is none of those things. The danger with speculation is that you may think that you are following any or all of those rules. Speculation is often emotionally driven and more resembles gambling than investing. A typical trait of speculation is that you don't actually understand what you are doing. When you're speculating, you may think you have a good rational reason for doing something, but you're probably just rationalizing an emotional feeling. Anyway, I hope I've illustrated the difference between investing and speculation and put it in a memorable enough way that you'll keep it in mind when you're thinking about putting any money to work in the market. If you're still confused about any of the differences between the two or you don't think I explained it clearly enough, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you out further. Please subscribe to the channel and if you liked the video, like the video. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you next time.